Let's do this. <laughs> uh, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're doing a um, video, and I've done a few videos down here, at the pen level, well, I'm going to do another one. Um, the outhouse where I do videos usually is jam-packed with stuff, because as you, some of you will know, I'm sorting out season three, <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of that shit to do. But regardless, um, I just thought I'd switch it up ever so slightly and uh, just do it like this for a change with me in front of the camera because people are whinging. Why can I see my fucking mug? I don't know. But anyway, Rod, so, um, videos. Right then, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about um, old porting, right? So there's uh, an argument where, or an argument that I have, and I've done several videos about this, about high velocity porting and so on and so forth. And um, this general idea that you will have, I didn't want to use pens. I wanted to try and get out of this for this video. So we'll get the, 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 the thing. We can, does that show up? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Good. So, uh, I didn't want to do this, but fuck it. Hence why the whiteboard was great, or the blackboard, or whatever. Which will be coming back, don't worry. Just can't get to it. Um, shit. What were we saying? What were we saying? Something like Isaac would say. Um, fuck. Oh, yeah, ports. Right, so what they'll do is, is that they'll have... I don't know how well this is going to show up, we'll see. I have a port like that, you can just make that out. Right. And then they'll they'll start sticking blue tack in it. They'll start sticking blue tack in it to change uh, to give it more of a rate. Actually no, it's not like that. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be too bad. Let me redraw that. So what they'll do is they'll have quite an a like that, right? Quite a preparation. Piss poor, something to do with performance. I never, li I never listened to it. So, <laughs> oh, you see the reflection. There we go, right there, like that, right. And then what we'll do is they'll fucking add a lump in there. And what they're trying to do is from here somewhere is they're trying to trace out a circle. But as you can see, the main problem with that is here you're blocking off port, right. And the other problem is is that from a cross section that may look great, but what you're doing, right, is you're turning. On the bend, you're turning what was supposedly a roundish port to now a not very, you know, it's it's a it's a smiley face during COVID. That's what it is, right? So you've done that, and then immediately behind it is a round valve. So you just it makes the slightest difference in the world. What that's telling you is that your ports are bad, right? Now. Why? Surely, you know, we're not smarter today than we are back then. Some people would argue we're actually dumber today than we were back then. Um, we just have computers to do the work for us. But why? Why were they stupid? What? The reason why was carburetors, right? Uh, I don't need that. So, the problem was that... Um, efficiency was becoming more and more of a thing. Simply, it was coming from all sectors. So it's coming from the you know the public sector for transportation a bit, but it was more coming from um, agriculture and industry. You know because they had a lot of diesel generators, they had a lot of um, trucks, lorries, tractors, stuff like that. So a lot of it was from the diesel, but a lot of it was from other companies. Um, you know, where you had to run, just say, a fleet of fucking aeroplanes, just say, because they were all prop planes, stuff like that, and diesel prop planes are good. You know, but there's all there's all these industries, It's you've got to remember, it's not just from our sector, it's not just from the end user. It is the biggest market, but efficiencies, the efficiencies, the fuel efficiencies are down to cost, and if you're a company, you're looking at one bill, and that one bill says this much fuel. And 
Then you go and speak to somebody, right? You go and you have a consultation with a, a mechanical engineer, or even more importantly, you go and have a consultation with um, a thermodynamicist, right? Shut up, dogs. That's a good point, actually. Just close that door. So, you go and have a, 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 a consultation, and he will tell you, ah, well, uh, the Otto cycle gives you a PV diagram and says, this is what you could have. It's like fucking bullseye. And then, well, what are we getting? And then he does, you know, so you'll go, like, fucking very, very quickly. That's wrong, but we'll just go with it. So you'll have a graph that looks like this, right? And it says, oh, this is what, uh, well, what do we have? Right. Oh, hang about, I missed a line there. There. So we'll have a line at the bottom, just to keep all you fucking posh people happy. And, oh, what do, you, do we have? Oh, well, weirdly enough, we have, we have this, what? What? Yeah, no, I didn't come through the front. Any road. <laughs> what do you have? Well, we have something like this, right? And the area in here is how much energy you're getting out. And they'll be like, holy shit, what? So we're missing all this. And then what could we theoretically have? So he tells them what they theoretically have. So they then get a bit angry and then say to their manufacturers, right, next time we order a new engine or a new vehicle, right, we want it to be better, right? Then obviously then came in the, 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 the efficiency gurus, you know, all these people tree hugging and stuff like that. You know, the people who smell a piss. Uh, and they have their dig. And basically, so this was a problem, right? So this is the 1970s, just say, and this is a problem. And how can we how can we sort this out, right? It wasn't a selling point so much for us, you know, as um, the Great Unwashed, but it was a selling point for industry. And they knew that eventually one day it'd become a selling point for people as well as the price of everything started to go up and so on and so on and so on and so on. So... Uh, and you know there was a lot of there was a lot of speculation back in the 1960s and stuff of how much oil do we have left and that speculation came from talking to the geologists and you know the oil industry and they basically said we don't know that's all they said they didn't say we're running out they said we don't know um, we'd have to evaluate the earth as a whole and the, the you know the known fields and blah 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 off it goes. So, what happened was, see how all these things are connected? Um, so basically, they knew that fuel was eventually, you know, everyone knew eventually it would get less and less and less. Or people also knew that it would, get, it would take, uh, as we tap the easy resources, as they dry out, we know that the, um, we, you know, we know there's, there's more difficult fields to get to, but that's going to cost more money, so that hence the fuel, price of fuel is going to go up. So, they all sit down, these mechanical engineers, at this de design department, you know, in each company, each engine company, be it Yamaha, be it bloody BMW, be it whoever. And they all sit down and say, right, how do we change the efficiencies? You know, how do we get any more efficient? And they say, well, what is the problem? And they say, the problem is, is that if we fill a cylinder, it's not mixing properly. Now, you can, you can say words like stratified, and homogeneous and blah 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 and heterogeneous and all this kind of shit. You can say all them words. It it all just boils down to we fill a cylinder and what happens is in the most basic way of describing this is this. Right. Seventy five percent of it like that of this cylinder is mixed properly and this other 25% up here isn't, all right? Now, we're not talking about volumetric efficiency. That 25% there is bad, right? So that's bad, and this is good, and um, good. And what it means is, like that, what it means is, is we've filled our cylinder, right? We're, we're measuring this, we're measuring this during 100% VE, or what, you know, what was the best at the time. But what was happening was, is you have a area where it's rich and an area where it's extremely lean and extremely rich. That equals the 25%. So this is, if you all bunched it into one end, 
75% of it was mixing quite well, but the rest of it, you got rich and lean. And they say, right, so what is the problem? And they say, well, the problem is quite simple, and it, it's, it's the carb, right? It's the carb's fault. <laughs> so you have your Venturi like this, and you ha you're drawing up fuel, yeah? And the thing is, it almost kind of like just tears it out, tears at it, and in the draft, it vaporizes. Now, if you have a throttle, pl uh, you know, a plunger, a slide, or you have a throttle plate or something, it causes uneven, you know, this, just say if this is, it's like a deflector, yeah? So there, there's going to be more fuel and air here, more fuel here, and this is going to be a bit shit, right? You're gonna lose some of it. Then you've got separation when it hits a wall in a sharp turn, and so on and so on and so on, right? So they said, right, so, it's the carbs fault, it's fed from one side, and it's fucking everything up. Can you hear me? So, the solution to the problem was to try and get the fuel and air to mix properly and thoroughly. And there's a general rule when you have two, two gases, <laughs> I say gases, one's a liquid trying to vaporise and one's a, um, one's a gas. And we want them both to become gases. So, uh, I don't need that. So, you can either have a very straight tube, if you have a very straight tube or a... Uh, uh, the same cross section and really gradual bends, you know, really large radii. Then what happens is is that your um, you predominantly have laminar flow, and what laminar flow means basically, I'm not going to get right into it, but basically what it means is it does this, right? Like you see on drawings for plane wings, you know what I mean? It does stuff like that. Where turbulent flow is as it sounds, it's fucking all over the place. Some of it going backwards, it's just it's just fucked. Right? Now, the problem is you can think about it like getting a piece of plasticine or dough, dropping some food colour on and pulling it. If you just pull it, you just can get these nice lines. And then lines are going to be dough, food colourant, dough, food colourant, you know, if you put one, two, three, four, five, ten drops and do that, right? But if you go like this and fucking mix it up and scramble it, you're going to get the colour spread evenly eventually throughout all this dough, right, as an example. So basically, laminar flow equals shitty mix, and turbulent flow equals good mixing. However, <laughs> nothing's that simple. Because laminar flow can fill a void, fill a cylinder quicker, and turbulent flow is slower. It's just that simple. Something that's more messy and stuff like that is just slower. Just say if you're trying to mix this door, right? You can just pull it and it's quick, but you, as you're pulling it, just to, to get a good mix, blah, blah, blah. That's a shit example, is that? But we'll go with it. So this is why in the 60s, 70s and 80s, you saw crazy things like offset ports, and there was even like deflectors on the back of valves and there was all sorts of weird rubbish, right? So they make the ports like this, like that, simply because it's easier. This is why a lot of American V8s are like this. It's easy. We need to put, for them, a rocker up here on a pivot, on a stalk with a valve, right? We need to do that. If it's a motor, you know, if it's a real engine, not a shit American V8 one, we want to put a camshaft up here, yeah, with a spring and all that gubbins. And it is easier to have the ports just come out the side. A brilliant example of this is like the Spitfire. The Spitfire has, they just come in and donk down. You know, I mean, there's like that, 90 degrees straight in. So this is easier to manufacture, it's easier to design, it means that you can have a smaller head, you don't have to be sexy, you don't have to do anything that is um, easy, you know, it's, it's easy, you don't have to do anything complicated. But if you look at heads today, yeah, they're like this, right, they have this funnel shape like this, and they've managed to squeeze everything 
in here. You know what I mean? They've had to be really creative in what they do. So, you'll see in certain designs in the past, or if you look in textbooks and stuff, you'll see they'll show you a cylinder head. This is not coming out very well, is it? They'll show you a cylinder head like this. Right? Then they'll show you a valve like this. And then they'll show you something like this. Right, and that's looking from above, so you can see that. So what's happening is, is the port, if we look side on, so there's your cylinder. Normally you would have a port that comes down, so we're looking from the side now. So that's in and then down, right? But no, these are offset to the side and then they, they switch in, so they go in, so they go in and then fall down at an angle. Of course, this kind of causes a little bit of a spin, a little bit of a twist to it. There's a bit of a, it's not a torque because the particles flying around, and if you want to call them that, the waves. No, not the particles, they're atoms. If you can call atoms, yeah, yeah, let's just not, let's just not go down that rabbit hole. But basically, you can cause this kind of tumble, right, swirl. And they design the pistons to help with that, and the combustion chambers, and you see all this shite. And that's to help mix the fuel and air together. All right, turbulent flow. If you have turbulent flow, then it starts to mix and everything's better, better efficiency. However, it now slows down your cylinder filling, right? So that's why that was done. Then what happened is the excellent, awesome invent invention called the fuel injector. The reason why this is different is because the spend, depending on the spending, depending how much money you want to spend, you can get the injectors to not just dribble the fuel out, right? You can force it. You can literally make it into an aerosol. It's an aerosol, you know what I mean? Which is droplets that are tiny in a mist, right? And this is all about volume to surface area. So the volume to surface area ratio is smaller the smaller you go i.e. the volume to, compared to the surface area is smaller, right? So uh, when you get big, so like something like the Earth, the Earth has shitloads of volume, but a small surface area in comparison. The smaller you go, the, in a sense, the greater the surface area becomes as a, as a relationship, which is great because you want, you've got the volume to get rid of, and the surface area is where you, that's the interface between the outsides. That's, in a sense, how those atoms of that droplet evaporate away. Looking great. So we want to go smaller and smaller and smaller droplet sizes. And injectors can do that. So you can then go, like we have done, straight pots, get fucking in there, buff, try and go as linear as fuck, right? Just straight in and spray a... Um, you know, we could just spray everything. Now, this is the difference as well. Injectors spray during the exhaust stroke usually, right? Power stroke, exhaust stroke, somewhere around there. And what they do is they spray the back of the valve, right? They spray in that general direction. They'll aim at the back of the valve and they'll spray there. And the reason why they do that is this, this atomized fuel lands on the valve. It absorbs the heat from the valve, cooling the valve, and it basically helps the fuel evaporate while cooling the valve, right? So we're basically turning this fuel into a gas, which is what we want, right? Fucking fantastic. We're doing two things at once. Carbs, you can't do that. And the reason why is that carbs only work when air is flowing through the venturi, and that's only happening on the intake stroke. So that effect isn't as good with a carb as it is with an injector. So we're removing heat from the valve and will help vaporising the fuel before we even get to the intake stroke, which is fucking fantastic. So this is why fuel injectors are basically the norm, because it gives you two things. The fuel injector vaporises more fuel, so you get a better, uh, basically, burning efficiency, which means you liberate more power for the same amount of volume. But number two is it means you can get a higher volumetric efficiency across a large rev range which ultimately picks up your graph everywhere which ultimately gives you more power right so that's the whole thing is the fuel injectors themselves the, the fuel the weirdest thing is the fuel injectors themselves don't perform 
that much better than cabs. Cabs do have problems with atmospheric issues sometimes where a uh, injector can be programmed to avoid them fuck ups. Um, the problem is these injectors are relying on all the sensors working, all that information and the map's been done properly and stuff, which they have been for all the criteria that manufacturers have to fucking pass. Um, Carbs are mechanical, so they're a lot easier to fix by you and at the roadside and stuff like that. So that's why people tend to like carbs or dislike injectors because they don't understand them. And because if they do break, there's nothing much they can do about it. It's just a bung in replace. But injectors are the future. They are ridiculously reliable fuel injectors. They're very silly. It's simple. It's a solenoid, basically, and that's it. Um, you know, and yes, you have to have a fuel pump, and yes, you have to have this, that, and the other. But, you know, we ride around all the time and they work completely fine. I would almost argue now that injection systems, the common middle-of-the-road injection systems, are better than carbs uh, for reliability. I just noticed there's a big groove in that. Never noticed it before. Um, <laughs> yeah, so fuel injectors are more reliable than carbs these days. Um, just because carbs are susceptible just to shit and gunk and crap and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so... And they're a bit temperamental carbs. And people love to fuck with them. But, um... Yeah, so... Um, that was the reason for ship ports, you see. The ship ports were there to increase fuel efficiency and what you do is you or, and it's laziness as well that's the other thing it's design laziness so when i see these new ls8s and all this shit and then i see the cross section of the head i look at it and go oh, for fuck's sake it's just laziness shit port design it's just laziness you look at your ducatis and your r1s and your fucking zx10s and you look at all this stuff and your h2rs and stuff you look at their designs engine designs compared to the MotoGP ones, which you can't really see often, or the Formula One stuff, right? These are literally looking for the best of the best. Because the, the Formula One stuff, even they were looking for the maximum amount of power for the best efficiency. And you look at the, the similarities between those engines, the top of the top, the top of the top, and the bike engines you get today, they're very, very similar. You compare that to these shitty V8s, it's like been. It's still, still, rockers, rockers and single cams. It's still stuck in the nineteen sixties and seventies because they're reliable. But the fact of the matter is, is you're using the base of a machine, which was designed in the nineteen forties and built on in the nineteen fifties. You're taking that design and you are sticking. You're just blue tacking a bit of licky sticky. There we go modern components on it like injectors like this like that like and there's no point having one without the other there is no point having fuel injection systems without starting to change your port geometries uh, there just isn't right there just there just fucking isn't there's no point the weirdest thing is is with the rocker system it is a bit easier a tiny bit easier to get your rocker system in there with straighter ports than it is a cam because you cam you've got the cam and then you need the the mass of the bearing journals your cam bearing journals to support that cam shaft so you can only fuck around so much but with rockers you just need to get the fucking the finger end in it's easier to do um, and then you put all the support systems because of the pivot the fulcrum's over there you can put all that you can beef all that over there somewhere um, but it's just the losses that's the other problem it's the losses in in the cam system all the losses you have between the cam, a bucket, just say, and a valve stem, you've got a cam, a push rod, a push rod to rocker, a rocker to pivot, a pivot end or a rocker to the end, and now you're back at the valve where you're going to have your losses there. It's just like, what the fuck? Just stupid. And then the hydraulic lifters in the middle, or solid ones, whichever one you want to go with. Um, just dumb. Just fucking dumb. I don't get it. Regardless. Um, we're still sticking with ports. Let's stick on, on topic with ports. Uh, yeah, that's the port thing. Is that the reason why they went... Um, why they had ports like that. So these guys who are trying to 
reduce the size of their ports, stick plaster seed in to try and increase that bend radius to increase the flow speed, they're doing two things. They are reducing the mass flow rate through the port, they are putting blue tack in their engine, which is never a good idea, they are creating more turbulence after the fact, which it still isn't in the cylinder yet. They're also now reducing... Oh no, the tur there's enough turbulence in it to make sure you do get the correct burning. So basically, when you look at it, all these things knock themselves on the head. And they're just re reducing the mass flow rate through that hole, right? And because, you know, they say stuff like this, well, we're, re we're, re we're increasing... Because they usually do it with carb engines, um, but what they do is they say, "Yeah, you know, we've 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 got this, we've got this port like this, right, into my, I don't know, fucking XJS or something shit like that, right? They got like this, and then what they do is they say, well, what we're doing is we're going to bump that like that, put this plaster scene in here, so it goes faster here. But all it's going to do now is it's going to come in and go, hi -yah! and get fucking, and go straight into that wall. And you're going to get bloods of port wetting. And you're fucking yourself anyway. Do you know what I mean? Oh, the, because they think, oh, the flow separation. Right, it just does this. But it is chaotic. Like, none of it is actually laminar flow, right? It is chaotic. And then what happens is, is a valve gets shut in your face. And then it opens. And the RPM and resonances and all the rest of it are constantly changing. Dumb. Dumb. That's what it is. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.